Hello everyone, Silent here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to build a very strange looking squid farm in your world. And this is kind of just my attempt at a solid squid farm on the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft. It might look really weird, really strange, and quite massive as well. But do not worry, this farm is completely expandable so you can start off tiny and then slowly build it up over time if you want to. But in this video I'll be explaining to you exactly how to build this in your world why this is pretty much the best kind of squid farm on the bedrock edition of Minecraft and exactly how this works as well so hopefully you do all enjoy this in-depth tutorial so this isn't specifically a squid farm or an ink farm this is more of a general oceanic creature farm meaning that anything that spawns in the ocean this thing is gonna be farming away so that means dolphins turtles squids and specifically a lot of fish so out of our 19,000 drops per hour we'll get 14,000 ish raw fish Fish, so cod, salmon, you know, tropical fish, what have you. We'll get 3,200 bones per hour and finally 1,300 ink per hour. So yeah, it's honestly pretty good. It's going to be providing you with all the food that you could ever need in any world ever. It's also going to be providing a really nice amount of bones and bones are just useful for literally everything on Bedrock Edition. They're very nice to have and this is pretty much the best bone farm that you're going to be getting as well. And also it's not too bad of an ink farm. 1,300 drops might not sound like that much out of 19,000 but for bedrock edition I'll take it that's a pretty good ink farm so the basics of how this farm works is all of your aquatic mobs will spawn in these bubble columns here they'll then get instantly drugged down to the magma block floor and die on the magma blocks all of their drops will then be sucked down to the bottom as well and collected from underneath by the hopper minecarts all of these hopper minecarts will then be unloaded into a water stream by some minecart unloaders and all the items will then go to your storage system so it's a pretty simple little farm so let's talk about why this farm looks the way that it does and why i decided to build this farm this way so i've been trying to make a squid farm for about a week now i thought it would be a fairly simple thing but it turns out to be actually pretty complicated and a lot of broken mechanics as well. You can check out the Bug Rock of the Week episode I did on that. But the main factor that makes this a lot more challenging and a lot more just kind of a headache is that squids do not spawn in river biomes. So we have to farm them in an ocean, which just makes it so much more of a hassle. So if you would like to actually see squids spawn in river biomes on Bedrock Edition, I made a suggestion on the Minecraft feedback site. It is linked down below. Please do upvote that and hopefully they will listen to our feedback and maybe add that to Bedrock Edition. That would be super nice. That would make Squid Farms a little bit less work. Actually, quite a bit less work. I've done so much different testing. I've designed so many different little farms and done just so much testing and building. It's kind of crazy. And some of the main things that I learned is that bubble columns are actually extremely laggy in mass. So if you have a really tall farm made out of bubble columns and map blocks, it's going to be very laggy. So you can't really build up a tall farm. You can't build multiple different towers. It's all just going to be very laggy. And you also need to kill everything pretty much instantly because all squids and dolphins and turtles share a mob cap of only four. Yes, four. So if you got four dolphins swimming around in your farm and nothing else is really going to spawn, that is useful. So that's pretty great. So I, I didn't actually get any good farms at all until I decided to spread out the farm and make it much more flat as well. This farm has way less spawning spaces but actually gets like 10 times the rate of anything else that I've tested and it's not laggy at all so it's basically like the one good thing the holy grail of squid farms. Time to address the elephant in the room. What is up with this massive platform that we have going around the farm? Well, this is basically the spawn proofing for your farm and what really allows you to get a ton of rates from this. So what we have is just a single layer of solid blocks filling up the entire ticking area around the farm for a four chunk simulation distance. And basically that prevents everything aquatic from spawning underneath your farm. So squids and dolphins and all of those things. You can also go ahead and kill everything underneath the platform as well and that'll free up your mob cap and then things will only be able to spawn 
and your farm and that is basically how you get the good rates with this it is mostly mandatory but it's just a single layer of a solid block so it's not really that big of a deal honestly all right so it's about time we finally hop into the tutorial for this build so there is going to be a full materials list for this build down below don't let it scare you this farm is expandable after all so you can start off small and then build big eventually and also there's going to be a world download for this exact world down in the description as well so you can check that out if you are so inclined but without further ado let's hop into it so first things first you want to find a spot to build this farm and you can basically build it in any ocean biome pretty much every ocean biome will spawn squids however you do want to avoid warm oceans where tropical fish spawn because from my observations squid have a very very low spawn rate in the warm ocean biomes now the best theoretical biome for a squid farm would be a frozen ocean because no dolphins spawn spawn here and no turtles spawn here either so that means that they're not going to be taking up the mob cap so you basically really only need a 48 block by 48 block area to build this so you can actually build your farm right next to land if you feel like it and that'll actually help you out a little bit simply because you need to do less spawn proofing because well fish don't spawn on land you'll need to build less of a platform around your farm and it won't be nearly as much build time all right so the first thing that you want to do when building your farm is find your central chunk now a chunk is a 16 by 16 area of the world and there's a variety of different ways that you can find these things either by using a website like chunk base or just a variety of different ways in survival, or you can use a resource pack like the one that I have enabled right now. If you're on mobile or computer, definitely get this resource pack and just install it because like, it's gonna make your life so much easier. It made my life so much easier and now I love it. Uh, if you're on console, you're gonna have to do things the slow way, but still it's not too big of a deal. So do keep in mind this chunk right here is going to be the very center of our farm. Our farm is going to be 48 blocks wide by 48 blocks long or three chunks wide by three chunks long. So make sure you have plenty of room. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to distribute the resource pack, so I'm not going to. I don't want to open that can of worms. If you want the resource pack, just ask around on Discord and people usually provide it pretty quickly. So I went ahead and marked out a little bit more of our platform right here. Every single one one of these squares is 16 by 16 and chunk lined as well as you can see from our red and blue lines now this platform is also just one block above the actual ocean layer and it's at you know y64 so keep all that in mind and that is pretty much it so this is the bare minimum that you will need for your farm a 48 by 48 area and you can kind of procrastinate on building the rest of the platform however you will need to build the rest of the platform eventually so we may as well just get it out of the way right now so now we need to do a little bit of an expansion to your platform and as you can see this thing gets slightly massive pretty quickly but don't worry it's honestly not that you know time consuming or difficult to really build up in your world so this is the basic foundations of our platform in place as you can see we've gone out four chunks from the very central one right here central one is marked in diamonds we have one two three and four going out and then on the ends of these we just kind of made a t by going out to the sides by one chunk so of course you need to do that on all four cardinal directions and eventually what we will need to do from here on is connect these corners just diagonally so We'll need to fill in this square, we'll need to fill in this square and the other squares as well, basically making this one massive platform for your squid farm perimeter. And it seems like a lot of work, but it's pretty much what we have to do on the bedrock edition to actually get good rates so this should be the final look of your platform as you can see it is fairly massive but it is the entire ticking area of a standard world or realm so what that means is that if you're standing in the very center chunk right here nothing past this entire platform will actually be loaded it doesn't matter if you can see it it's not loaded it's never going to do anything and that is perfect. So you're also going to be AFKing inside this chunk when you use the farm. And now what you should do is you should go underneath this platform and actually kill all of the drowns and fish and squid and dolphins and all of the things that you can find in the ocean underneath this platform. Because those things are going to be, you know, taking up the mob cap in this area. And you need to clear out the mob cap as much as you can 
of the aquatic and passive mobs. That way, things actually spawn inside of your farm. So there is, of course, the slight possibility of things swimming into this area from the outside edges, like a dolphin that spawns right here could swim inside this area and cause some potential issues with your mob cap, but that's not going to be too big of a deal as long as you are careful, but what you can do is also go ahead and build a wall down to the bottom of the ocean, or something like that to keep mobs out, maybe just put a ring of magma blocks around the entire farm, that way that anything that tries to swim in or swim out will get sucked down and die. And now it is time for the expensive part of this build, so I hope you are prepared, we basically need to cover every single block within the center nine chunks of our farm right here with rails that is in the realm of 30 something stacks of rails again materials listed down below for those of you who are curious so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using one minecart for a four wide stretch of the farm going all the way from one end all the way to the other so basically four by 48 and that means that we're going to have 12 minecarts in total and I'm going to build up basically what you need to build right now. So uh, you can use redstone blocks if you like. That's what I would suggest. But you can also, you know, go down underneath the farm and instead use levers to power your powered rail. Although that's going to be very tedious and not really that comfortable to do. So pick a corner of the build that you would like to start building your rail lines at. I'm going to pick this corner over here. And that means that we're going to have all of our minecart unloaders in these three chunks right here, which will worry about a little bit later. But starting on the actual rail lines, we're basically just going to make a little bit of a tail of powered rail just going out this way. This is going to be going to the actual minecart unloader itself. And basically, we're just going to have three powered rail and then six normal rail. Three powered rail again, six normal rail, and just keep repeating this process until we get down to the farm. And then we need to loop it back around basically three times. And yeah, this is going to take a little while. Let me time lapse this. Okay, so once you get down to the very end right here, we're basically just going to run this into a solid block. And that is going to make the minecart go that way, hit that end, turn back around, go down here, turn back around, go back down to the other end, turn back around again, and then hit this block and then go in reverse. And then all the while, it's still picking up items and getting pretty much completely full. And then it's going to go into our minecart loader eventually. So as you can see, we have basically just a four wide stretch. And then we have another tail for when we're going to have a minecart unloader. So you basically just need to make 12 of these four wide stretches. And that should cover the entirety of your 48 by 48 area. It's going to be a lot of resources. Again, you can build the farm smaller and expand later, whatever works for you. All right, so once you get all of that rail in, it's a lot of rail, I would suggest going ahead and putting down a minecart on each one of your little tails just to make sure that everything actually works properly and you didn't miss any powered rails. Uh, this is just kind of the best time to test everything. So what you want to do to build up these minecart unloaders is more or less just go to one of the corners of your chunks right here that has your powered rail tails going out of it and this is the very edge of our 48 by 48 area that is covered in rails and we're just going to go ahead and put in a little bit of magma blocks right here and then go out and up by a block and just surround that with glass real quick and that is going to be the very corner of our entire like killing platform for the farm. Eventually, this is gonna be a 48 by 48 platform, but we will get to that in just a little bit. So the powered rail that is right underneath this piece of glass needs to be completely flat, but the one that is outside of, you know, the underneath of the glass should actually be pointing up at an angle. So what you need to do is get yourself some rails and some powered rails and just build yourself up a little bit of a staircase up by four blocks, just like so. And then you want powered rails on all of those and a normal rail on top. So let's get building, shall we? You want to go ahead and place down three temporary blocks right there with a hopper facing downwards into the center temporary block. Place two solid blocks on the edges just like that. And then place a comparator reading that hopper through that block. 
you want a block on the front of the comparator, redstone torch right there, block above it, repeater coming out of that block, it should be powered, and then a block in front of that repeater. Go ahead and place a piece of normal rail above the hopper, and then a piece of powered rail right there. That should also turn on from your repeater. Then go down below and place a dropper right underneath your hopper, facing it towards the ocean of rail. Go ahead and get a temporary block right there, a solid block below it, and then a comparator also reading from that dropper. Go ahead and also place a sticky piston right there that should be powered by both of those comparators, and then grab yourself a couple of observers. You want one observer right there facing the ocean of rail, one right there facing away from it, solid block behind it, redstone torch, and a block above that redstone torch. So anytime that items go into that dropper, it should activate that observer clock and shoot out every single item. And that is pretty much all there is to this little minecart unloader. So now that you have one minecart unloader done, you can go ahead and build up the other 11 as well. And now there are two things that you wanna do once you have all those done. The first thing is go ahead and build a redstone line at the backside with a whole bunch of sticky pistons. And these sticky pistons are basically gonna be retracting the blocks that are right above your redstone torches. That is how you're going to turn off your farm and turn off your item collection and all that stuff. So as you can see, when we flick all that, all those blocks get extended. All of your hopper minecarts would be sent out to collect items. And then when you turn it off, all of the items stop getting collected. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You'll definitely want to turn this system off before you actually plan to unload this area because you don't want these guys getting deleted on chunk borders. Now, the second thing is also a trench right in front of your droppers right here. And this is basically to send all of your items down to either end of the farm, either that one or this one over here for your storage. And this is basically just a water stream and make sure you don't flood your rails because I've done that several times, it's annoying. And yeah, it's pretty straightforward, just kind of a water stream system. If you wanna know exactly how to build this, you can watch the actual tutorial that I did on this minecart unloader. So as you guys know, I always leave storage up to you guys because it's super subjective and everyone likes to do it differently. Uh, but this farm produces twice as many items per hour as a hopper can actually move in an hour. So uh, yeah, you definitely need to get a little bit clever and double up on that and definitely get some item filterage going on here because this farm also produces about six and a half double chests of items per hour. So yeah, uh, have fun with that one. I'm very curious to see what you guys come up with. So these minecart unloaders are the complicated part of this farm. And now what we need to do is build up the actual rest of the farm right here after you do significant testing, making sure all these rail lines work. So basically what we need to do is build up a 48 block long by 48 block wide platform of Mabba blocks. As you can see, I have marked out the corners right there. And let's just see what this looks like completely filled in. Uh, again, you may want to get yourself some Frostwalker boots to build this project because those prevent you from taking damage as you're walking on the magma blocks. And you also want to go ahead and build up a three block tall wall around this entire thing as well. Man, they're going to hate me for this one. All right, so now that you have your entire floor in place and your walls in place as well, what you wanna do is go ahead and fill this thing up with two layers of water. Now, the easiest way to do this is just to, you know, put a layer of blocks inside this thing right above your magma blocks and then just kind of run from the corner and it just kind of go all the way across the farm and that should create a massive amount of water sources inside of this entire thing. Now, because you're in an ocean biome, some of this stuff is gonna be freezing. It might be a little bit of a hassle, but that's fine, it'll spread eventually. Now, also, it's gonna freeze. So you wanna go ahead and remove those uh, stone blocks right above your map blocks before everything freezes because, you know, ice is annoying. And then you need to get rid of the ice. So and nothing actually freezes in bubble columns, which is really convenient. So what you can do is just pop that out. Uh, try not to instant mine your magma blocks underneath and then just place down a block and that will also uh, allow the water above it to reform. So you will need to do that for all of these stupid pieces of ice. If you don't feel like messing around with any of the ice, what you can do is go ahead and put yet another solid layer of blocks temporarily above your farm to prevent anything from freezing. But, you know, what can you do? You could also go ahead and put light sources above this thing as well, just like a sea lantern every now and again to prevent the ice. So if you did everything correctly, your magma block floor should be at about Y66 when you're standing on top of it. 
And that means that your AFK platform is going to be at about Y99. It's a little bit higher than it needs to be, but that is fine. So as you can see, everything is spawning in. Everything is dying pretty much immediately. And it just looks really, really cool up here. You can see squids are dying, tons and tons of fish. All the mine carts are getting unloaded. Items going into the item stream as always. And it just looks really cool up here. So the thing about this AFK platform is that you don't want to build any of this out of solid blocks because as you have learned from our massive platform around the edges, solid blocks above water will prevent all the aquatic spawns in that water. So you want to make your entire platform up here out of glass and non-solid blocks like that. Uh, I've had this farm on for just a couple of minutes and we've already gotten so many things. I'm wondering if these hoppers are actually backed up. Yeah, they're a little bit backed up, so you're going to need to find some clever storage solutions. And that's going to do it for this Bedrock Edition tutorial. I do hope that you guys all did enjoy and get a ton of use out of this farm in your worlds. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, then of course let me know in the comment section down below. Always trying to help you guys out as best as I possibly can. And if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss the next tutorial or Let's Play or random video that I upload to the channel. Check out those videos as well if you have not already. They're on the end screens right now. But if you did enjoy this tutorial, then maybe do leave a like on the video as that really does help out me, the channel, and the video, and just everything in general. So thank you very much for the support. As always, I will see you guys down in the comment section and in the next one. And then there was silence.